Coastal Arch. Here's the ziphoid process. The anterior abdominal wall and all the abdominal organs have been removed. Now we'll take a look from below. Here's the diaphragm. It's a thin, continuous sheet of muscle with fibers that converge from all around the circumference to insert on this flat tendon, the central tendon of the diaphragm. The diaphragm arises from a line that goes right around the inside of the lower thoracic aperture, with one interruption here. To see the line of attachment, we'll remove one half of the thorax and look from inside. The line of attachment of the diaphragm goes from here on the back of the sternum, along the inside of the costal arch, and round to the tip of the twelfth rib. Between the twelfth rib and the body of the second lumbar vertebra, the diaphragm arises on each side from the fascia which overlies the two big muscles of the posterior abdominal wall. These are the quadratus lumborum and psoas major muscles. Three important structures pass through the diaphragm, the esophagus and the two main blood vessels of the lower half of the body, the inferior vena cava and the descending aorta. This is the opening for the inferior vena cava, the vena caval foramen. This is the opening for the esophagus, the esophageal hiatus. This is the opening for the aorta. On each side of these two openings, there's a thickening of the diaphragm called a crus, the plural of which is crura. The left crus arises all the way down here on the body of L2. The right crus arises even further down on L3. The two crura arch over the aortic opening, forming the median arcuate ligament. Fibers of the two crura cross over to surround the esophageal hiatus. When the diaphragm contracts, the whole sheet of muscle, together with the central tendon, moves downward, expanding the lungs and causing a